Round two of Columbus's Kosai. Before we begin, if you are new to this channel, then hit those like and subscribe buttons along with that bell icon to officially join the Columbus crew. As you probably read the thumbnail and the title, we are back at Kosai. And well, for one of my favorite limited time attractions. Because, well, we're going to go somewhere a little tropical. Obviously, where we want to be right now. But anyway, we're going to see pretty much all life, whether the living and the extinct in any habitat. In, well, the country. Well, the interesting country of the one that's called Cuba. Cuba, or Expedition Cuba, whatever you want to call it, is a limited time exhibit here at COSI. It's open from now till Labor Day of this year. And, well, for this video, well, it is a little different than what we usually do at the Columbus Zoo. And a little different from the last episode. Like, really different. I'm really not going to lie. But still, there are a lot of animal-related stuff in here. Whether, well, those who are sculptures of real-life animals that are, well, again, pretty much sculptures and not really alive. And also, well, a skeleton that I really need to mention and well there are actual living breathing animals so let's do this for this video we're actually going to start right next door at the dinosaur gallery because we obviously need to mention the very famous tyrannosaurus rex or t-rex where you want to call it either way it's still the same animal even though there hasn't been any fossils in cuba i assumed the t-rex had to be part of this video but anyway, the T-Rex is one of the world's most deadliest predators and one of the world's largest land predators. The biggest specimen so far recovered was over 45 feet long and weighing over 7 tons. Though the arms are not really that useful for this predator, those 68 banana-shaped teeth can generate a bite force of over 10,000 pounds. And now we are arriving at our preferred destination. Welcome to Cuba! which is like almost 2,000 miles away from Columbus. As you enter, you can see different programs are happening in Cuba and also fast facts of the island and also what's happening around Cuba. Though the first thing that we're looking at is brewing on an animal, but I know my friend Tyler right here was very interested in this old-fashioned car only he's for Cuba. Even though we only saw a T-Rex skeleton in the car yet, don't worry, there are animals up ahead, I promise. A big promise. First up, we're heading to the tropical rainforests to see a few glass displays and a few terrariums. First up, which is a very odd looking rodent, the Damaris utia. And yes, that is, this is the first time I ever pronounced this species. Which it almost looks like a mix of a rabbit, capybara, and beaver. Right next door to utia is the Cuban Sunilodon, which looks like it has a prehensile trunk, like an elephant shrew. The next glass display is usually telling about a couple of Cuba's birds, including, well, the larger one, the ivory-billed woodpecker. What was once extinct, well, it was rediscovered a couple years ago by a couple of sightings. And this recording right here is the only known ivory-billed woodpecker call. Right next door to the woodpecker is the Cuban trogon. Believe it or not, the Cuban trogon is actually the national animal because the feathers resemble the flag. Above the woodpecker is a painting of the Cuban macaw. Sadly, this macaw went extinct in the 19th century due to the pet trade. Next to the trogon is a Wallace giant bee and a bee hummingbird. Two tiny creatures that they are above the Cuban toady. Which, this is a common bird that usually lives in the rainforests of eastern and western Cuba. After looking at a few cool looking birds, these two goofballs were kind of looking at the butterfly display. Which, this display shows what butterfly species live in Cuba. And well, just to keep the video going, there's a full species list below. To see, well, what butterflies live in Cuba. We saw glass displays of a couple of mammals, birds, and butterflies. Now, across from them, is a few small terrariums. The first one, which is the smaller one, is usually home to an amphibian. An amphibian I yet to see. And luckily, well, my friends pointed out that they have found what I was looking for. This is the Cuban tree frog. 
obviously like a whole lot of frogs that he's usually see in the Amazon or pretty much all around the world. These brown frogs, well, do live in Cuba and, well, obviously they love climbing trees and glass, apparently. Which, well, luckily for me, I managed to cut very good shots of this cool looking frog. On our right, where Josh is pointing at, is another cool looking exhibit for, well, a reptile I very wanted to see. This is a home for the small woods anole. When I saw this for the first time, which was obviously my recent visit to Kosai, I was in love with this lizard, mainly because the colors, as usual, like a whole lot of reptiles. But also, one of my coworkers told me about the Cuba exhibit, and really, this is how I ended up. Came here, seeing the small woods anole. Which, for me, because, well, not only this is my first time seeing the small woods and knoll, but this is the very first time I ever recorded the small woods and knoll. And this, well, was definitely worth it to come here to Cuba. Now, right next door, where my good friend Tyler is pointing at, is something a little larger. Anyway, this is one of the largest homes. And good reason. This is home to the very large boa constrictor even though this one's not really that large just yet. Like pythons and anacondas, the boa constrictor is a constrictor snake, meaning it doesn't use venom to kill its prey. It squeezes the life out of its prey, and then, well, opens its jaws much wider than a whole lot of animals and swallowing its prey whole. These snakes, well, believe it or not, is the, probably the third largest snake in South America and can eat anything from small rodents Tried to small monkeys and even may even try to swallow a howler monkey. We just have one more reptile that we just need to mention here in this part of Cuba. And look for me, it's another first the bearded anole. Unlike the small woods anole that we just saw, the bearded anole is, well, obviously more brown in its color. And it got its name, if you look closely at its head, well, there's little spikes coming out, almost representing a beard. And they're also being referred as false chameleons because, well, with their very long legs and toes for them to climb trees, like this one. Again, like the Cuban tree frog, small woods and knoll, the boa constrictor, and now the bearded anole. This is usually, well, one of the best ways why you need to visit Cuba to see some cool reptiles. That's one section down. We still got three more to go. As we're making our way through this Cuban market, well, our next section is just up ahead. The Cuban coral reefs. Well, like the last episode, well, we are back in the ocean once again. This time, we're just going to introduce a couple animals that are native to the Cuban coral reefs, which are beautiful. First up is the, well, beautiful spotted eagle ray, even though these ones are pretty much sculptures. And well, just like a regular stingray, they look like they are flying in the water. One of the biggest things in here is the Goliath grouper. But, well, even though this is probably one of the largest groupers, well, this fish does not compare the size of the mighty and dangerous tiger shark. One of the most deadliest compared to the great white. And if we see one, this is how we will respond underwater. As we're leaving the oceans, we are now making our way to the caves of Cuba which in this section is usually home to a couple of extinct animals that once lived here in Cuba. One of them right in front of us is a Cuba giant owl. Believe it or not, this huge extinct owl was actually the world's largest owl. And well, the way how it usually hunts, it usually hunts like the secretary bird that lives in the African savanna. After looking at the largest owl, my friends spotted these cool looking artifacts which may have been some bones of animals that used to live here in Cuba. It is pretty interesting, and what you probably might saw was well, a giant rock that looks like a giant fossil of a shell. Near the exit is, well, a couple more skulls. The top one for extinct Cuban monkeys, which this exhibit wants you to compare the monkey skull to also the extinct Cuban giant sloth, which is crazy. We are now heading to our last section, the Cuban wetlands. Pretty much, well, the Everglades in Cuba. Which, well, this is usually one of everyone's favorites, which I can see why. It's pretty large and pretty good. I do like the sculptures of many animals. 
including the first one, the Cuban crocodile. This has to be one of the most dangerous predators in Cuba. Obviously, because this one is trying to grab a bird that I'll be mentioning in a minute. There is also a little display in the back with a couple of Cuban crocodile hatchlings. And unlike a saltwater crocodile, it is very small. It can grow only up to 200 kilograms. Near the end of the room is a few skull comparisons of an American alligator and a Cuban crocodile to see the differences. And the crocodile's possible dinner is a roseate spoonbill. And just to make clear, these are not flamingos. Spoonbills, which also include the African spoonbill, well, these guys are related to ibises, like the Hadada ibis, sacred ibis, like we have here in the Columbus Zoo. And as you can see, this bird got its name because its bill is shaped like a spoon. The last animal I need to mention for Cuba, well, are the Cuban parakeets. These parakeets usually live in dry forests and open savanna, along with wetlands like this, usually almost around Cuba. And as you can see, well, these parakeets usually take over the spot where a Cuban green woodpecker would usually, well, do all the work. And believe it or not, these parakeets can also take cover in termite nests. But unfortunately, like a whole lot of animals that you usually see here in Cuba, well, these parakeets have been listed as vulnerable due to habitat loss. And hopefully, they won't go extinct like the Cuban macaw. And that finally ends our journey in the island of Cuba, where we got to see wildlife in jungles, oceans, caves, and even swamps. And, well, I'm very glad I also got to tell you guys a few extinct animals that, well, I rarely tell on the channel. And also, well, had to mention one of the world's greatest predators of all time. By the way, I hope you enjoyed Cosize Cuba. And the next time I'll see you, well, we will be back at the Columbus Zoo.